Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for clicking on another video. Um, I've got a new camera and I'm still learning how to use it. So I hope that this comes out well. Judging by the viewfinder, it's looking cute. It's looking pretty and I'm excited. Um, but I haven't like added a microphone or anything. I've just, just gone with out the box press record. Another thing, I had some weird reaction around my eyes. I don't know what it is, but I woke up with really puffy eyes yesterday and today I've been cutting everything out. I mean, I did put on makeup today. Probably wasn't the best idea, but honestly, it doesn't feel like it's the makeup that's causing the reaction. I've used this makeup for a long time. I've washed all my brushes. I've done all of that. I say all that to say, if I look a little puffy, if I look a little, what's going on, babes? You okay? Then the answer is I will be okay. And I'm not sure what's going on with that. Anyway, in today's video, I wanted to tell you how to achieve your fitness goals in 2023. These are five steps that I will be taking to achieve my fitness goals in 2023. And I will be sharing that process right here on the channel along with you. Um, get out your notepads and do everything that I say in this video. I mean it. I've done this before. This is not my first rodeo. I know how to set a fitness goal and achieve it. I've done it time and time again. I'm very confident that I will be doing it again this year. I enjoy the process. It's good fun. And I wanted to share that with you guys because I know a lot of you have fitness goals and sometimes when I speak to friends and loved ones and, and people about their physical health and I hear how people are struggling, I'm like, I really want to help and I figured this video would be a good way to help. I'm not trying to sell you anything, there's no gimmicks or anything like that. This is just good information. So I really hope that you like it. Oh, I just redid a twist. I did it a little tight and it's a little achy, but we're going to speed through. Let's go. Step one is to reflect on 2022. Honesty is really important whenever you're trying to change yourself, okay? You're the only one who really knows what you do, what you think, and how you feel. Someone else can come in and observe you and tell you their impression, but you're the one who has the insight. So think back to 2022. Did you set any fitness goals? And um, even if you didn't set any fitness goals, what did your health and fitness life look like? How did your eating go? How much exercise did you do? And be honest with yourself. You can write things down. Sometimes it's hard to hold this whole conversation in your head. So as I said, grab a note paper and write things down. What did your diet look like? Why did it look that? way for me something way back that I used to do a lot was binge eat a lot and if I was sitting down and reflecting on a binge I would say why did I eat five donuts in one sitting and the answer would have been because I felt sad because I was feeling sad and I find food comforting another reason would be because I had five donuts in the house and a reason for that would be because five donuts back in the day don't know about nowadays but they used to cost like 60p and I was a student and I was skint and that was kind of cheap <laughs> a cheap way to be full. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm reflecting and I'm answering questions really honestly. I'm not saying what I wish to be true. I'm just being honest with myself. So ask yourself what happened in 2022 with your eating, with your exercise, and why did it happen? Don't judge yourself. We're not here to judge. We're just here to be honest. And then what went well in 2022? What are things that you want to take into 2023? Are uh, there certain things that you loved? Maybe you went to a lot of gym classes because you love the people at your gym. That's a really good thing. Write that down. In this process, in step one, we just want to reflect and be honest and gather information. Like any good practitioner of medicine, you take a history first. You learn what the truth of the situation is and what's happened. You investigate first because the steps that you want to take in order to get you from point A to point B completely depend on where point A is. You have to find point A before you can start giving directions. So any kind of fitness coach or any kind of advice someone tries to give you without first asking you questions and listening for a good period, take it with a pinch of salt. You have to have to know where you are in order to know the direction that you need to go. So take the time to do this step. Do not skip it, reflect honestly and tell yourself the truth. 
Then we move on to step two. So we wanna go from point A to point B. It's not only important to find point A, we also have to define clearly point B. Where do you want to be? Your goals might look completely different from mine. In fact, I have a feeling that they do. They probably look completely different from mine and they're completely up to you. The only thing I recommend when people are setting goals is that you set ones that are healthy and good for you, okay? So if your goal weight is below the recommended healthy weight for your height, then I do not recommend setting that as a goal. I personally do not judge whether someone wants to, I don't know, get filler, get Botox, any of those things. The only thing I ask is what will the results of this be on your health? That is physical and mental health and also financial health, okay? So when it comes to you setting your health and fitness goals for the new year, set them but bear that in mind okay i am not one for limiting a goal there are people who say oh your goals need to be realistic for me i will never limit someone okay if you want to be the fastest person in the world set that goal if you want to win an olympic gold set that goal if you want to have abs for the first time in your life set that goal i'm a firm believer in shooting for the stars and then if you hit the moon the moon's not that bad do you know what i mean like aim high i personally you know other coaches will disagree with that but i'm like tell me exactly what you want exactly what you want because i truly believe that it is possible for us to achieve our dreams so i will never live at your dreams and within this step i want you to write it down write down your goals there's been research that has shown that people who write down their goals are more likely to achieve them i want you to write it down as a clear statement so i don't want these goals to be abstract i want them to be clear and defined to the point where you can visualize them so for me one of my goals for the new years is to run five kilometers in 25 minutes that's five minutes per kilometer at the moment i run it in 30 or so minutes, I don't know, something like that. So if I was gonna be setting that goal, I would make it clear. I would say, my goal is to run five kilometers in 25 minutes or less. And the way that I would help myself to visualize it is that I would say something like, I am so happy and proud of myself now that I can run five kilometers in less than 25 minutes. And I would make that a statement. So I want you to do that with your goals. Write them down, make a clear statement that you can visualize. When you say it out loud, you can see it and feel it. You can feel that pride that you've achieved your goal. For example, I am so happy and proud of myself now that I can do 10 pull-ups write that down, write that statement, write that goal, make it clear, print it off, place it in places that you can see so that when you go to open your wardrobes, get ready, you can see that goal then you can say, I am so happy and proud of myself now that I've hit my goal weight. I am so grateful now that I can swim 10 miles. I don't know, I'm not a swimmer. Do people swim 10 miles? That seems like a long way. That seems like a long way to swim. Then that brings us into step three, which is to write a plan. So we're gonna start from point B and we're gonna work our way back to point A. Ask yourself what is needed. For example, if it's the running goal, in order to run 5K, I'm gonna need to run 5K. So maybe I'll say I'm gonna run three times a week where am I going to run? What will my route be? When am I going to run? Am I going to do it before work? Am I going to do it after work? Sometimes it's dark and cold both before and after work. Am I going to do it on the treadmill, in the gym? Make a decision. Make a clear plan. What will I wear while I'm running? When will I stretch? When will I recover? I'm going to plan everything down to the minute detail. Now it sounds ridiculous, but the point of this is to make all of the small decisions now in advance while I'm feeling motivated like new year new me so that when it comes to actually applying these things and doing them there is minimal reason for me to quit okay when it gets to 5 a.m on a windy cold January morning I don't have to ask myself what shoes am I gonna wear or what route am I gonna take all I have to do is do what I've already decided because decision fatigue is real. And sometimes we can sit there spending so long to make a decision that, oh, well, I have to go to work now, so I guess I won't do my 5K today. No, 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 no. We're gonna anticipate that and we're gonna plan for it. Now, while you're writing this plan, another thing I want you to do is to plan for your worst self, okay? We do not wanna leave any room for our worst habits in 2023. We wanna make our worst habits as difficult as possible. So if we take us back to me back in the day, 
binge eating a pack of five donuts, how do I stop myself from getting to that point? Because in the moment when I'm emotional and I'm sad and I just want food comfort, it's too late. It's too hard to stop that. That's what I do. I, I wish I could tell you otherwise, but I, in that moment, I do not have the self-control to make the decision that I want to make. So within my plan, I'm going to plan for the weakest version of Sarah, who has no self-control, who all she wants to do is eat all of those donuts in one go. How am I going to plan for her so that she can't do that? And the way I'm going to do that is by making it as difficult and as impractical as possible for the weakest version of me to make the decision that I don't want to make. And I'm going to make it as easy, smooth, and effortless as possible for the weakest version of me to make the decision that I do want to make, which is to eat a healthy meal. Steps that I can take that I might include in my plan will be that always do my food shop when I'm full. So never do a food shop on a hungry stomach. So if I'm going to do a food shop, I'm going to eat first. Even if that means eating a KFC beforehand, because I know that whatever I buy in that food shop is actually gonna be what I eat for the next one to two weeks. And so it is more important for me in that moment to be of sound mind, to not be hungry so that I can make good decisions in the shop. And so then when I've done my food shop, I haven't bought any donuts because I've had the noggin. I've not been like, oh, I'll just grab a 60p pack of donuts. Oh my gosh, the wind is howling. Another thing I might do to protect my weaker self, meal prep in advance so that in that moment where I'm feeling sad, I can still binge, but I can just binge on like healthy food that's not gonna make me feel horrendous. You know, there's no donuts in the house and there is a meal prep. Do you see what I mean? So make that plan for the weakest, worst version of yourself. Because that is who we're really trying to support here. We're not trying to support motivated Sarah who feels like going to the gym at 5 a.m. No, we're trying to support sad, lonely, depressed Sarah who wants nothing more than to stay away from the gym and feel sorry for herself. She is the weak link that we need to think about when we're making this plan. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Step number four is something that I recommend all of the time and I really believe it's key. Focus on input over output. So input is what you do to achieve the goal, which is the output. So output is the goal, input is what you do. Focus on what you have to do, not on whether or not you've achieved the goal. A watch pot never boils. Say it with me, a watch pot never boils. People are out here weighing themselves every day. Oh my gosh, to me, that is a sure way to discourage yourself. You have to be really good at um, having patience if you're gonna be weighing yourself every day. So it can be really discouraging. Our weight fluctuates on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you've had a really good day where you've eaten well, you've gone to the gym, you've done what you wanna do, and your goal is weight loss, and then you weigh yourself the next day and you weigh more, that's really discouraging. So let's not focus on the output. The output will look after itself. We've already made a plan that we know will get us to the goal. So let's just focus on doing that. And the way that we can do that is by tracking and monitoring uh, our behavior and our steps that lead us to the goal. And I don't mean like obsessive calorie counting. I mean that when you get up and go for a run, tick that off, keep a list, keep a habit tracker in your plan and tick it off and celebrate it. Say to yourself, oh, I'm so proud of myself. Celebrate as though you've already got the goal. So celebrate the input that will get you the goal as though you have already got the goal. Because you can't be saving up your happiness, okay? We're not trying to wait until four months from now and you've hit your weight goal and then you'll be happy. No, celebrate along the way. Because if you keep doing the things that you need to do, if you keep doing that input, the output is definitely gonna come. So when you do the input, you should be really pleased and proud of yourself and celebrate that and focus on that. And that will help you to stay motivated because you'll enjoy the journey more rather than it being discouraging, discouraging, I'm never gonna get there. I'm watching the pot, it's not boiling. You can actually decide that, oh, it was because you were watching the wrong pot. The pot that you should be watching is the one of the input. And that one, you're smashing it because you've been doing what you said you were gonna do. Focus on input over output. I cannot stress that enough. It will really help you stay with your goals long enough to actually see them come to pass. <laughs> Sorry, got a bit excited. And the fifth and final step is to believe that you can achieve your goal. 
Mindset matters so, so much. I'm telling you, one of my favorite things, or not even favorite things, one thing that I say really commonly is um, if someone says, oh, I can never do that. I say to them, well, not with that attitude, you can't. Because it's true. You, you could do that if you had a different attitude. But if you believe that you can't, then yeah, no, you can't. Because you've got the wrong attitude, you've got the wrong mindset. The only person who can control what you think is you. You're the main character, okay? You're the main character. The thoughts in your brain, you have control over. You can change your negative thoughts to positive thoughts. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's so much easier to be negative, which is why so many of us are negative. But what you can do is make intentional steps each day to believe that you can achieve your goals. It's time to flip the switch and change the conversation that you've been having with yourself. Stop telling yourself you're lazy and you can't achieve your goals. Stop telling yourself you're obsessive. So instead of, I will never Never achieve my goals right the opposite I achieve all of my goals instead of I'm lazy I'm a big procrastinator right I'm diligent and hard-working I make great use of my time and each time you write the positive one cross out the negative one feel what it feels like to hear yourself say kind things about yourself you have to create a positive environment for change okay and that's all I've got um, for you guys today thank you so much for watching I really hope that you find these tips helpful I hope that this has inspired you or helped you to some level if it has then let me know by giving me a thumbs up leaving me a comment and subscribing for more videos let me know what else you want to see i'll see you in my next one. Oh, and let me know if you like this new this new camera i'm liking it love you so much see you soon bye <laughs>